I represent a 30-person firm. The name of the firm is Ehrlich Architects. I am the design print principal. I started the firm about 30 years ago. But now we're 30 people and um, we, I have three partners and five associates. And these are the core group of people that really make our office uh, run. We also have people from all over the world work in our office and that makes it like a little mini United Nations and keeps everything quite exciting and fun. We're working on quite a different uh, scale of different projects. We do anything ranging from a single family house all the way up to the project, the biggest project we're working on now is we just won recently uh, the design competition for the new parliament building for the United Arab Emirates and this is uh, 1 million square feet, which is 100,000 square meters. So it's a very large project. And we're also doing a United States federal courthouse. We're doing several houses. We're doing university buildings. We have maybe a half a dozen uh, university buildings either being designed or under construction. So it's quite a varied pro uh, practice, and we, we really enjoy that diversity. going to quote somebody. I was just speaking at the uh, Biennale, Buenos Aires Biennale, and I heard a lecture by the French architect Paul Andrew, the man who did the opera house in Beijing, and he said something that left a big impression, and he said, architecture is like love, there is no limit. And I like that idea, it's such an interesting way to put it. I mean, architecture is, is, uh, it is limitless, it has so many possibilities of what it can be, but I know one thing for sure, it is about people. It is about people. It is about bringing people together, having them celebrate life, maybe bringing them into a, a, an environment where they can find peace and quiet. Uh, it can mean many things, but it's there to serve humankind, and it's there to do it in some magical and beautiful way. You know, the role of architects, uh, if you look at it from the narrow point of view, obviously we need to design buildings, but I think from the broader perspective, the architects need to actually see themselves as advocates for creating a better environment. And by doing so, it's their responsibility to the future. In other words, it's something very interesting. If you look at the 30-year life cycle of a building, 90% of the cost is actually to maintain it and the energy put into it to, keep, to sustain it. So I think that as architects, we need to be very aware of uh, depleted resources and to really make an attempt to uh, design sustainably. This is very important. I think it's also, uh, the, the role of the architect is to bring, how do we, I said it a little bit earlier, but how do you bring people together? This is important. Especially as we, as human beings, are becoming more, I think, isolated through technology. We're all deep into our computer screens. We're all deep into our iPhones and cell phones. So it's very important that we still have ways of connecting and having synergistic cross encounters. This is this is what's important. You know, innovation is very important. We're always looking for new ways of of looking at that issue. Uh, in fact, one of the things I like to say is, how can we be global, but how can we also be simultaneously local? And so. The way to be local is to understand the fundamentals. I, I love to look at the vernacular architecture of any location. I like to understand the culture. I don't think a building in Boston should look like a building in Beijing. If that was the case, everything would be just all the same. And I, I don't believe that. I think we have to have it 
culturally imbued. And the thing that's really changing, I think, is, in a, is, is technology. And technology comes in so many forms. It can come in materials. It can come in uh, systems, electronic systems, uh, the possibilities of where glass is going. It won't be long before we can produce electricity out of the same piece of glass that we look through. So the possibilities are great. We have to be always aware of these innovations. But I think we shouldn't be a slave to the technology. It's the architect that has to understand the technology and bring it back to that original place of fitting into the fabric of a city, of, of maybe being on the mountainside and establishing the beautiful setting and how the project, whatever it may be, sits in that setting. So innovation can be looking forward and looking backwards. Connecting with people is really important. Uh, in fact, one of the things that I love to do is speak at conferences. I do guest teaching in different countries, maybe one week at a time. It's very exciting for me. Um, Networking is a way of sharing, it's a way of learning. That's really important. I just came from the Buenos Aires Biennale and heard uh, 30 architects discussing their projects from all over the world and, that, and sharing my own work as well. And that was a, that's a form of networking. And it, it's, it's it, listen, architecture is about people and, um, and I think that that networking is important. Um, and I also think that uh, that that sometimes can lead to actually business opportunities. Maybe I'll meet an architect in Taiwan who says he wants to team up and that has happened. So it could have actually good business potential. We're using the internet a lot. Uh, actually, when we start a project, uh, some of our younger practitioners will surf the net and pull out information depending on the building type, maybe materials, certainly the location, the, uh, the climate, the environment, the cultural uh, history. So the internet is becoming a very powerful, not becoming, it is a very powerful tool that we, we use all the time. One of the very interesting things of my formation was that I actually, right out of university, uh, I worked uh, in the urban planning department in Marrakesh, Morocco for two years. And I then took a year of traveling across the Sahara Desert into West Africa and then became a teacher of architecture at Amadou Bella University in Nigeria. So I had a very unusual uh, formation. I then moved back to Los Angeles and started my own practice after a couple of years of working for another architect. I started from what I like to say, ground zero. I started from just doing the littlest uh, unimportant projects and slowly, 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 slowly built up. Um, in fact, my first house that I designed in California, I even became the contractor and the carpenter and I helped build it. So I was passionate about, um, you know, about going through the whole process. And slowly, slowly, we had more people working with us, and then uh, we're now 30 people. But I think that for a young practitioner, there's no, there's no single path for you to, to follow. Uh, first of all, follow your dreams. This is important. Follow your passion, very important. And have different experiences. Don't worry about getting your first job and working your way up the ladder. Try to have multiple experiences. This will be very good. And then as you mature, you will then find the right situation for you and I think it's great if you could live in a foreign land for a little bit, experience different cultures. I think these are all rich experiences.